All right, you guys. So it, it's 1 o'clock on the East Coast here. Um, and, and as always, we'll go ahead and start our call on time. Everyone's now on mute, but when the time comes for questions or comments, I'll tell you how to request unmuting so we can call on you. My name is Azer Cole, and I'm one of two Citizen Empowerment Coordinators here at American Promise. And welcome everyone to the American Promise National Citizen Leader Call for December, a call that happens on the second Saturday of every month. And thanks to all of you guys who have taken the time out of your busy weekends to join us today. Or maybe you couldn't make it and are listening to this recording afterwards, but either way, you're stepping up to save our democracy, so a big thank you to all of you. Today's call is going to be slightly different than past calls in that we're going to take time to review the amazing year we had in 2017 and look forward to the exciting year ahead. And in just a couple quick weeks here, we'll hit the new year, and I think this is a really great opportunity to talk about all that we've accomplished in 2017. We're going to be joined by Jeff Clements, who's the American Promise founder and president, and also consistently on these calls, introducing our guest speakers. Last month, we heard from Nina Turner, president of Our Revolution. The month before that, it was John Pudner, president of Take Back Our Republic. And before that, we were joined by U.S. Senator John Tester of Montana. And this week, I'm going to be filling in for Jeff and introducing our guest speaker, because the man can't introduce himself. Jeff's going to give us a thorough rundown on what our growing community has accomplished in 2017 and how we're going to continue to build on this momentum in the new year. And as always, there will be time for question and answers interspersed throughout the call. And after we hear from Jeff, we'll do a role play practicing inviting a friend to an outreach meeting for our APA, real or hypothetical, before talking about this month's action, which is writing letters to the editor. But before we do that, I'd like to just start with the quote from Ralph Nader who said, there can only, excuse me, there can be no daily democracy without daily citizenship. Let me repeat that. There can be no daily democracy without daily citizenship. And this daily citizenship is what's gotten me so inspired by all the work American Promise Association members have been engaged in day in and day out. Since the call last month, new APAs were launched in Nashville, Tennessee, and St. Louis, Missouri, and every day it seems like there are more and more people wanting to step up and become citizen leaders in our vital foundational fight, the fight to reclaim our democracy from big money and special interests and return it to its rightful heirs, the people. It's now my pleasure to introduce Jeff Clements, American Promise founder and president, who started American Promise in 2016. Jeff's practiced law for the better part of three decades, both in public service and in private practice, and is the author of Corporations Are Not People, Reclaiming Democracy from Big Money and Global Corporations. Jeff's long been a leader in the movement to win a 28th Amendment to secure fair and free elections for every American and ensure that human liberties are given to people and not corporations. And Jeff works tirelessly to translate the will of the people on this issue into the political will needed among politicians to win the 28th Amendment. So it's now my pleasure to bring on Jeff, and after we hear from him, we'll have a chance for some question and answers. So be thinking of questions as he talks, and go ahead and press 1 on your keypad to raise your hand, and I'll call on you. Hey, Jeff, how are you doing? Good, Azer. How are you? And hello, everybody. Uh, so good to be with you today. Um, what I thought I would do, and that might be helpful for us all, is to is to kind of step back. It's December. It's the end of the year. Uh, we're about 18 to 24 months into the launch of American Promise and our 10-year game plan to win the 28th Amendment in this decade. And I uh, thought it would be helpful for all of us to, um, again, take uh, a step back, look at, uh, you know, why we need an amendment, um, how, what our strategy is, how much we accomplished together in 2017 and some of the high points that we're looking towards in 2018. And I'll move pretty quickly over it all so that we can open up the phone lines and get uh, your input, comments, questions, and discussion. Um, so let me just begin. The 28th Amendment, it's a big lift. We know that, but we, I think, also know together that we're out of easy solutions in this country right now. We face severe challenges, corruption, debt, environment, economic violence, drug addiction, justice, so much more. And most or all of these are either caused by or exacerbated by the root crisis of concentrated money and special interests controlling our political system. In short, 
Big donors, special interests, global corporations are well represented. Most Americans are not. So we have to replace the dominating political influence of big money with the effective influence of the people as our democracy and republic were designed for. And the only way to do that is with the 28th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. The Supreme Court has left us no choice. So with all of us together, we can get this done, and we are getting it done. That's the story of 2017. It'll be the story of 2018. This is working. We're using methods proven by nearly every generation of Americans to win the 27 amendments that have come before. And to meet the urgency of our task, we're adding technologies and advantages of the 21st century, including calls like this, uh, which weren't available to our predecessors, and yet they got it done. So here's our strategy. It rests on three principles. First, it takes everyone. Uh, this is not a partisan play. It's not one party. It's not one election or one leader. It takes everyone. Amendments need national consensus and effective cross-partisan strategy. All 27 amendments before passed that hurdle. They take two-thirds of Congress. They took ratification in three-quarters of the state. Uh, you can't win this without a strategy that rests on the principle that everyone can help and that we can build a cross-partisan engine to drive it. So that's what we've done with American Promise. We think we can succeed in every state, any town, anywhere in America. So it takes everyone. Number two, the second principle, it takes people power, unity, and relentless pushing. Most of the amendments, and including this one, um, didn't happen or won't happen because the politicians wanted them to happen. The, whether it was the Bill of Rights, ending slavery, bringing civil rights, women voting, ending the poll tax, and many more, it happened because the people pushed and pushed and pushed and overcame an entrenched, corrupted status quo. And so that's what we're built for. Uh, together, all of us, American Promise, we connect, unify, inspire, and empower. And it's why we spend so much time and effort and uh, work together to build out local and state networks of volunteers. We embrace different views and strategies and say, let's try them all. Uh, we embrace different organizations, whether local, state, and federal, and respect people of different political views to work together on the shared goal. And then the third principle is it takes smart, connected, and strategic national and local campaigns knitted together to actually drive towards the getting the amendment out to the states for ratification. And that's what we're doing too. So let me tell you what it looked like in 2017. Uh, it was an amazing 12 to 13 months. Uh, we won three more state campaigns and launched many more. Many of you were at the National Citizen Leadership Conference in October 2016, the end of last year. We came out of that with huge wins in California and Washington State ballot initiatives, thanks to American Promise members and others in WAMEND and Fix Democracy First in Washington and Money Out Voters In in California. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of volunteers having thousands of conversations and getting that on the ballot and winning. And then in early summer 2017, we won again in Nevada with the Nevada legislature passing a strong 28th Amendment resolution, making 19 states formally endorsing and calling for the 28th Amendment. We launched ballot initiative campaigns for the next phase in Massachusetts and Wyoming and Florida. Hundreds of citizen leaders, actually probably thousands at this point, collecting citizen signatures for similar 28th Amendment ballot initiatives teed up in 2018 and 2020. Thousands of you took action to move resolutions forward in 25 more states in legislative efforts. And in addition to state resolutions, we now have nearly 800 local resolutions that have passed in recent years. And I gotta say 2017, the champion award for that goes to our amazing friends in Wisconsin, Wisconsin United to Amend. We've heard from George Penn and others on this, these calls about how they do it. And they go deep, and they have racked up over 100 victories in cities and towns all over Wisconsin. And they're usually not close, 75, 80, 85 percent support. Again, we can do this anywhere uh, in Wisconsin. They've showed us how to do it. We'll be doing a lot more of that. And this is what we call the citizen uprising, of course, local state victories. And that's what moves, the, that's what does the people power uh, that I talked about. So we're now at 44 senators. 165 House members in favor of the 28th Amendment. We'll need two-thirds, remember, that's 67 senators, 290 House members, but we keep pushing and performing like we did in these last 12 months. 
and we will get there sooner than anyone realizes. Uh, 2017, how did we uh, drive all of these and grow? We had 100 live public education events in 20 states. Uh, we have now two dozen local American Promise Associations all over the country, including 13 new ones just in the last 12 months. 1,200 of you participated in 60 citizen empowerment training as members of American Promise Associations in 2017. More than 5,000 citizen leaders signed up for calls like this, our national training calls, received follow-up action sheets, the letters to the editor, meetings with elected representatives, and, and took thousands of actions, including uh, 4,200 American Promise citizen leaders sent over 12,600 letters and emails to state legislators and members of Congress. That's what you did, 12,600 letters went out. 2,000 American Promise members initiated more than 400,000 conversations about the 28th Amendment, many of those in the context of the citizen ballot initiatives I mentioned. Uh, we had 100 meetings with members of Congress and state legislatures in both major parties you testified and, and met with legislators to shape 28th Amendment resolution in more than a dozen states. So it's an incredible year of, of performance by all of you and so many American Promise members across the country. And, and I say members, and that's the final thing I want to mention about 2017. There's a lot more to say, but I, I know we want to open up the phone lines. We are a membership organization. That's how this happens. That's how we stay together. It's how we work together how we build this together. Look at this, in 2017, we started the year with 5,000 citizen leaders around the country. We now have 143,000 in all 50 states. We started 27 with 500 Americans in our sustaining membership program. That's members who pay dues either annually or monthly. We now have more than 4,000 sustaining members. And I said it takes everyone we have everyone. We range in age from 18 to 94. We're in all 50 states. We're urban, suburban, rural. We're a range of political beliefs, progressive, conservative, Republican, Democrat. So 2017 was amazing. I thank you all. Thank each other. If we weren't on mute, we'd hear a big round of applause to, our, to all of our efforts together. Uh, but maybe Azer will let us do that at the end because uh, you all deserve it. It was an amazing year. So let me just tell you quickly about 2018, what's coming. We're doubling down. This is working and we're gonna crank it up. The citizen uprising, we're at 19 states. We need 38 to ratify. We're gonna tee this up in all 50 states, 19 on the board, uh, 25 pending. We're gonna get the rest with um, your help resolutions in every state. We're gonna turn up the heat on politicians. We have our 2018 candidate pledge campaign. Time to take our, our mighty people power and make sure it's reflected in our elected representatives. With the 2018 pledge campaign, which you'll hear about if you haven't already and it's on our website, we're gonna insist that anyone who asks for our vote learn more about the 28th Amendment and pledge to support it if they wanna have our vote. Uh, we want written pledges. Again, doesn't matter what party the candidate's from, they can sign up to this. We're gonna be cranking out our campaigns of citizen letters to the editor, of, uh, to members of Congress, to state legislatures, and we'll have uh, thousands of contacts like that in 2018. And because our strategy depends on and uh, succeeds with uh, doing this together, uh, we promise every American, wherever we are, can do this, but we know we do it better together. We're gonna continue to expand the Civic Courage program that this call is a part of, that the American Promise Associations are a part of, that our National Citizen Leadership Conference and Citizen Empowerment Program are all a part of. So in 2018, we're gonna have 50 new American Promise Associations in every state. If you're not in an APA now in your community and wanna get involved in launching one, let Azer or Waboy know. We'll work with you, support you. You'll have a great time. We'll make great progress. And finally, let me say for 2018, mark your calendars, June 22nd through the 25th. It'll be our second National Citizen Leadership Conference, June 22nd, 25th. Washington, D.C. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, we're going to have a coordinated citizen lobby day added to this one um, so that we'll be able to go to every office in Congress. And uh, again, a lot more to come on that, but mark your calendars, June 22nd, 25th. We'd hope to see you there. Um, with that, let me um, just
quickly summarize and then open it up for your comments and questions. Our strategy, citizen power to drive the 28th Amendment within the decade uh, and getting it out to ratification shortly after the 2020 election. Uh, 2017, huge gains, hit our targets, exactly positioned for the cross-partisan 50-state work we need to win. 2018, we have specific targets and goals to move the states forward, rapidly expand our movement, and move the profile of Congress much closer to the one that will reflect the overwhelming demand of the people uh, for the 28th Amendment to end corruption and let the people govern, not money. So all of this is something we do together. It's not uh, some entity called American Promise. You are the American Promise. You are American Promise. We all are American Promise. So we're going to get it done together with millions of other Americans. And thanks for a great year. Thanks for all you're doing. And Azer, let's open it up so we can have a conversation and any questions that folks have, uh, and we'll go forward. Great, great. Thanks so much, Jeff. Thanks for laying that all out. Um, so yeah, if you have a question, just go ahead and press 1 on your keypad, and I'll call on you shortly. It looks like we've got someone with their hand up. Um, I'm going to call on Travis Beicher. Travis, you are unmuted. Just uh, shout out your name and where you're calling in from, and let's hear your question. Uh, so yes, it's actually Travis Speaker um, in okay. Newcastle, Delaware is where I'm calling from. Um, so I had, uh, well actually I had been on a call with you before, Azer, as far as uh, getting an APA started in the state of Delaware. Um, thing is, uh, so I've been listening in on these calls for a little while. It seems like you get a lot of big names calling in. Last time somebody had had a question about like the Article 5 convention, and I've, uh, it didn't really get addressed as far as like her fears about the runaway convention and that sort of thing. And I'm just thinking that in the end is going to be a method that we're going to have to employ if we want to actually pressure Congress to do anything or even just like end up writing the amendment that we need ourselves. So I've been kicking around the idea of joining up as a member, donating some money, but kind of on the fence about the whole thing because, well, I went and checked the resolutions you guys have online, like as far as keeping track on the states, and I realized like the convention calls haven't been on there for an Article 5 convention dealing with the uh, issue of money and politics, like the Citizens United decisions and so on. And I'm just wondering, are you guys like behind that, or do you guys not support that sort of thing? Travis, thanks. Great question. Um, let me let me uh, spend a few minutes on this because it's a big issue in our movement, and I want to be very clear. American Promise, as I said, is about connecting and unifying all Americans who want to win the 28th Amendment to help us do it. We have members who strongly believe that without a push for a convention, uh, Congress will not budge and we cannot win. We respect that. We support that. We also have American Promise members who are concerned about the fear of a runaway convention, particularly for other amendments um, getting through that might uh, not be as virtuous as our 28th Amendment. Um, we respect that concern. Um, we think the best way to succeed, not only for the 28th Amendment, uh, but as, as a movement and as a nation, is to take the views of those folks on both sides respectfully and seriously, um, we can all learn more from each other. I know I've learned a lot more about uh, the Article 5 convention process that, that uh, has been part of this debate, and I know many others have. Um, and uh, we can all act. So we do actually have on our uh, citizen uprising, which is related to the resolutions that we are encouraging people to get behind in every state. Some of them include convention calls. Some of them don't. Uh, the great folks in Wyoming are pushing hard uh, for a ballot initiative, part of Wyoming Promise, that includes a call for a convention. Um, I have testified uh, in support of bills uh, that have convention calls and resolutions in Massachusetts and Maryland. Um, I note what I said on this call, that I personally, because of respect for our members and our different views, uh, don't stake out a position on whether a convention call is a good one, a, a good idea or a or dangerous ideas, some fear, uh, but I say pushing these resolutions and working together to uh, for the common goal of the 28th Amendment is absolutely essential. We will support any effort to do that, 
while we respect the different approaches. So um, I, I hope that answers the question. Um, we will continue to try to make all information available and connect our members together so that we can deliberate about the advantages and risks of all the different strategies, uh, whether the risks of a convention push or the risks of not pushing hard enough, uh, including on a convention as people have done in, with previous amendments in order to move it forward. So um, I hope you will join American Promise. There is not only room for you, but we need you in this uh, debate, Travis, and we need you in this push. And I assure you, uh, we will support any effort that advances the 28th Amendment. And our, our model isn't about us doing it as you know, American Promise. It's about all of us doing it together. And that means we have to respect there are different strategies and that nobody knows best how we're going to win this. We will win it by pushing all of the different strategies and getting it all over the finish line. I will throw out a quote that I think I'm stealing from Ken Chesteg in Wyoming, who's on the call. So he'll, he'll, uh, I give him due credit, but he says, you know, when we're all locked out of the house, uh, some of us are trying the doors, some of us are trying up on the roof, trying to get in the window and whoever gets in first is going to let everyone else in. So, Let's not, you know, throw things at each other. Let's let each other keep trying to figure out ways into the house and we'll get there. So Travis, great question. Thanks for the opportunity for me to address that. I hope that I hope that makes it clear. And it'll certainly be a subject at our National Citizen Leadership Conference to and elsewhere so that we can continue to um, learn from each other and get strong as a movement together. Great. Thanks, Jeff. And, you know, that's actually a perfect segue. Ken Chestick is on the call and has his hand up. So, Ken, I'm going to call on you. How are you doing? Where are you calling in from? And what's your question? Uh, thank you, Azer, and thank you, Jeff, for that answer. I raised my hand before Jeff gave his answer, and he said pretty much everything I would have said anyway. I'm calling in from Wyoming. We're, we're, I'm with uh, Wyoming Promise, and we are uh, pushing hard to get on the ballot here, um, likely in 2020. We're not getting the signatures quite quickly enough but uh, to get on 2018, but we will certainly get there on 2020. And my comment uh, is simply uh, based on the, uh, on the Article 5 Commission. I would love to see a session at the National Conference in June devoted to this topic uh, and have a debate. Let's have people on both sides of that issue. Wyoming Promise is very clearly on the side of let's do a convention call. I'm not afraid of, of a runaway convention at all, and I can explain why. Uh, but I'd love to see that as a breakout session or, a, or maybe a plenary session, a debate at the convention. Let both sides have, it, have their conversation, and uh, I think it would be very useful for everybody. And that's my comment. Thanks, Ken. We, we will do that. Great. Um, let's go to Chris Corfanta. Hey, Chris, where are you calling in from? Hi, I'm also from Wyoming. So for a little state, I guess we're well represented on this call. Great. Um, my comment is um, a couple calls back, one of your uh, new members from Indiana, he was a, an electrical engineer, shared um, information at a, about a PowerPoint. He he created to share with everyone. And so we've taken that here in Sheridan, Wyoming, and are tailoring it for our group. And I want to give a big, big, big thank you to whoever the electrical engineer member from Indiana is for making that available to us. Great. Well, is it all right if I... Chris. Thank, thank you. Go ahead, Azer. Yep. Yeah, and you know, you're talking about Dan Coy and the really fantastic American Promise Association out there in Naperville, Illinois. Um, you know, big shout outs to Sharon Gander and Don Double as well, two of his just all star members who, you know, worked really hard putting that presentation together and for anyone who hasn't yet seen it, um, they've made it available on their Facebook group page, um, which everyone can have access to. The way to do that is to go to the American Promise Facebook page. On the left side, you'll see groups. Um, and just join the Naperville, Illinois American Promise Association group. You'll see that presentation right there at the front. Um, Chris, so, so glad it's been of help to you guys. Um, and I'm sure Dan and the really great folks in Illinois will, will be really thrilled to hear that. 
Um, yeah, so just again, if you've got a question, go ahead and press 1 on your keypad so I know to call on you. Jeff, I've got a question for you. Um, you know, say someone's been thinking about getting a local group together for a while, um, but is on the fence. You know, everyone seems really busy in politics, which is certainly a good thing. Um, you know, what would sort of your advice be to them as, as someone who, you know, wants to engage on this issue, but, you know, still has some hesitancies? Well, I got the good question, Azer, and of course it de it depends on, on on the person. I think there's no there's no single formula, and there's no single way all of us um, can uh, figure out how to best use our uh, abilities and time to help advance this urgent task. And so, you know, I think part of what we do at American Promise is is treat people with that uh, respect for their where they are and. Um, so the first thing I do is, you know, throw it right back at you, Azer, and, and my boy, and say, talk it out with my boy and Azer, um, and they will make it very clear about the kind of support that comes, the kind of way that can make it work for busy people. Um, and uh, one of the things, you know, we've learned a lot and as we've done this the last, uh, you know, year and a half to two years, and one thing we learned is. Uh, you know, don't do it alone. Uh, we do what we call the inviting team. So we bring uh, a few people in together so that and they then bring in a few people each so that you're starting with kind of a group of people. It gives you resiliency. It gives you depth. It gives you flexibility. Um, and then uh, it, it, there's, there's the, uh, you know, the ongoing uh, four-part training and other support. So once you hear about it, you'll know more about what it means to start an APA, an American Promise Association, and what kind of support you'll get from American Promise to help succeed. I think the other aspect of that question, of course, is, um, you know, there's so many challenges that I mentioned, so many pulls on all of our time uh, from issues to electoral politics to you name it. And, uh, you know, in the end, we all have to choose what is the most effective uh, thing do we believe we can offer for our country and and these and to overcome these issues and again I respect where anyone comes out on that but I I would make the case that uh, with this 28th amendment with the American Promise movement and, and APAs uh, we can begin to solve so many issues from uh, the ones I identified to the toxic divisiveness and ineffective uh, partisan government we have now. Um, to the long-term challenges, to laying the foundation for the generations that come after us to have an effective democracy. This, le this work really leverages everything else. So it doesn't mean that other issues aren't as important or that electoral politics isn't an urgent part of uh, what this, every citizen has to be involved in as well. But I think it does mean it's really worth uh, our time, whatever we can give of it, to try to move this real, real foundational historic work forward. And the beauty of the American Promise Association and getting involved locally is you have that depth and that resilience and, and uh, connection with others in your community. So you're not doing it alone. And it doesn't mean you can't do other things as well. Uh, again, this is something that is embracing. It takes everybody. Uh, and so that's what I'd say, but the real key is, you know, talk, you give, you give co contact Aether and with boy, talk it out, see if it works for you and, and give it a try. I, uh, that would be my advice. I think people have found, uh, and I guess that's the other thing I'd say is talk to, you know, I know Vicky's on the call and Laura and Marie and others who have done this and, and talk to some of those folks and they'll share what um, their experience has been. So that's, that's how I begin to approach it. But again, I think it's really individualized for each person. Great. Thank, thanks so much for explaining that, Jeff. I, I think you did a really great job, and it, it's always nice to you know, have a half an hour long conversation with someone across the country whose situation is unique, but the same, the same bonding factor is you know, they really care about getting money out of politics, and we go from there, see how you know, we can best be of use and of assistance. Um, we've got time for one Maybe two more questions. Let's go to Doug Miller. Hey, Doug, where are you calling in from, and what's your question? Hi, I'm calling from Maryland. Uh, I'm with Get Money Out Maryland. Um, my, it's not so much a question as, as a comment or a suggestion. Um, 
as, as Jeff will remember, since he moderated this particular panel, I was on the panel at, at the uh, the national conference last year, along with Allison Hartson and uh, 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 people from Common Cause, uh, debating the question as somebody suggested earlier uh, ought to be debated on the Article Five issue. My uh, suggestion or comment would be that while we would be happy to again uh, wait, uh, talk about the pros and cons of the Article 5 approach, uh, what we'd be more interested in would be <coughs> figuring out ways, as, as you guys have, have said is important, uh, of, of getting the sides, the people on both sides of that particular issue to to work together and uh, not uh, not torpedo each other as common cause has has done to us. Uh, that's my comment. Thanks, Doug. Doug, thanks thanks for the comment, Doug. Um, and 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 uh, the point is well taken. Uh, and I think you're absolutely right. This isn't about one side winning a debate over the other side. This is about uh, people who share a goal, who have uh, different strategies in, in this one instance. Um, the, the role of the Article 5 call for a convention in moving amendments forward. That's the issue, and uh, there, I, I would venture to say there'll never be a 100% um, agreement uh, that if we just have the debate, we'll come out 100%, everyone on the same side. Uh, right to the end, when, when we get this amendment out to the states for ratification, this will be a healthy discussion. And so you, the, how we have this discussion and continue to support each other uh, and this shared goal is absolutely essential. Let me give you one idea and we'll talk more about um, this as part of the discussion at the conference. Um, but in Massachusetts, uh, as I mentioned, we have something called the We the People Act in the legislature, uh, which is which says essentially that if Congress does not propose the amendment within a, a given time period, uh, consider this a call for an Article 5 convention to propose the amendment. Um, and uh, so it's a it's a convention push, uh, and and American Promise includes that as part of the citizen uprising that our members can support. And as I said, I. I testified about the need for the 28th Amendment in that bill. We also offered a ballot initiative push uh, that we called People Govern Not Money and said um, whether you support the We the People Act or whether you're nervous about a convention, don't spend energy you know, attacking that. Instead, get on board the ballot initiative, get out and collect signatures. The ballot initiative does not have a convention call. What it does to turn up the pressure uh, turn up the political heat is create a nonpartisan citizen commission to drive the amendment forward, to hold the politicians' feet to the fire, to report to the people factual, credible information about the impact of big money in politics and what our elected officials are doing to move the 28th Amendment forward. So it's an example in one state of what we're trying to do nationally, which is offer ways to move this forward and work together no matter what you think about a convention uh, or not a convention. So uh, there's different ways to do it. We offer them all. And we have many people who support both, uh, who recognize, you know, we don't know for sure which one's going to work. So uh, we have members who are supporting the We the People Act and then going out and collecting signatures for the People Govern Ballot Initiative. And by the way, both are doing very well. Um, and the signatures that collected were just hundreds and hundreds of volunteers, uh, resulting in nine, 90,000 signatures turned in last week to the Secretary of State's office. And, you know, at the hearing for the We the People Act that I mentioned, it was packed with people. So I think this strategy, um, your suggestion, Doug, that we, that we work together regardless of where we come out on the convention discussion is absolutely essential and we'll keep uh, supporting efforts that allow that kind of collaboration. Great. Um, thanks, everyone, for the really fantastic questions. Jeff, I'm inclined to, to take us now to our grassroots victories for the month, but just want to give you a chance to add anything that you, you weren't able to add or just want to close on here. 
Yeah, no, uh, thank you, everybody. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll be back at the very end of the call, but I'm also eager to, to hear more from our from uh, our APA leaders and our grassroots victories from Laura and Marie and others. So uh, I will be happy to turn it back over to you, Azer. Thanks. Great. Yeah, so it's now my honor and privilege to introduce our two grassroots victories this month. Um, Jeff, as you mentioned, Laura Nittmeyer from the Montclair, New Jersey APA is going to talk about a meeting she and her team had two weeks ago with their Republican member of Congress, Leonard Lance. And then we'll hear from Marie Hensoder Kimmel from the Tri-County APA, also in New Jersey, who will talk about the sustained action her team has been in since their launch this summer and how they consistently stock their local papers with letters to the editor about the need for a 28th Amendment. So let's hear from Laura Nittmeyer first. Uh, hey, Laura, how are you doing? So, um, can you hear me all right, Laura? I'm here, Azor. Can you hear me? Yep, hear you loud and clear. Okay. You can hear me okay? Yep. All yep, right. We can hear you. Go ahead. All right. Um, I was going to say last year at this time, I would have said that holding the meeting with uh, Leonard Lance, our Republican member of Congress, was impossible. And, um, and that it certainly was, but the reason was that I was so angry that I couldn't see myself even being civil in such a meeting, much less organizing one. So um, I had also never met with a member of Congress before, so I had little to go on as far as procedure or you know, knowing my representative's personality uh, to help me prepare. And um, as the American Promise training started in February, uh, I imagined mainly a battle of wits happening in such a meeting, and and that certainly could not be productive. So I had to take some time uh, to look for some common ground that I might have with him first, or just find anything at all that I could thank him for um, in order to settle down and actually prepare to meet. Then I would say I saw it having lots more Republicans to support the 28th Amendment would be essential. And since the Republican landscape is where I reside, um, I thought I should give it a try. Now, um, recruiting a small team to go to the meeting was an early challenge. Um, in Montclair, we have a small but great APA of about eight members, but we're spread over five northern New Jersey congressional districts. So no one else there was from my district. Um, okay, I have a lot of Republican friends, but for different reasons, they each uh, didn't seem to be the best choice of person to ask. So in order to assemble a group of constituents to join me, I, what I did was I went to a few local club meetings and spoke about my plans. And in a short time, four people had uh, approached me expressing their desire to join the meeting. Um, requesting the meeting went really quickly. Um, we had <laughs> less time than we planned to prepare. Um, we studied uh, Leonard Lance's recent media appearances and looked for points that we had in common. He had mentioned working with the Democrats on the, the tax bill, the ACA, and the sexual harassment issues. Um, so one of our team members checked into the co-sponsors of uh, the 28th Amendment bills um, HJR 31 and 48, looking for the Democrats who'd collaborated with our representative on other bills. And um, then we divided up the roles that we thought we would take in the meeting and practice what we would each say in advance, at least what we thought we would say. As it turned out, um, we wound up listening instead uh, for most of the quite generous uh, 120 minutes. Uh, that he gave us, and um, and we learned a lot. So I felt we did really well. Um, it was hard, <laughs> but we used our knowledge of the two bills to be helpful, and we were able to answer a few of his concerns directly. 
um, we establish ourselves as being serious and knowledgeable without being contentious at all. We didn't try to sell him on our idea. We were just getting to know him. And um, we only asked him to talk with a colleague, you know, someone he already knew, to learn more. So on those terms, we would be welcome back. And he even said that ours was an easy meeting for him. Um, so in the end, you know, his summary was, was quite validating for our work. He said, the way to approach this successfully is to inform the public how elections are funded and who is doing the giving <laughs> uh, to crafting uh, public policy. He said that amending the Constitution is difficult and approval by Congress, uh, approval by Congress by two thirds is a high barrier, but it's feasible. Um, which I th thought was surprising he would say that. But he said the real challenge is going to be ratifications in the 38 legislatures. Um, so all told, uh, it was a good time, and I'm looking forward to doing another one um, early next year. Great. Thanks so much, Laura. It's, it's really fantastic working with you, hearing from you on this call, hearing about this really incredible first meeting that you had. And it's really meetings like the one you just described that are exactly what's needed to have the big breakthrough in winning the 28th Amendment. So again, just a huge, huge thank you for everything that you're doing and for stepping up in Montclair, New Jersey, and for leading here on this national call as well. Um, so now That's let's hear from... Yeah. And now let's hear from Marie Henselder Kimmel um, of the incredible Tri-County, New Jersey APA as well. Hey, Marie, how are you doing? Hi, good, Azer. Hi, everyone. Thanks for giving me this opportunity um, to share one of our achievements in Tri-County APA. My collator, Joan DeVore, and I launched Tri-County APA this July to represent Camden, Burlington, and Gloucester counties in New Jersey. We're located just across the Delaware River from Philadelphia, PA. Um, our group of 15 has had success with six letters to the editor published since September by five different members of our group, with one published in the largest newspaper of our metropolitan area, the Philadelphia Inquirer, and the rest in our smaller regional papers like the Courier Post with a circulation of maybe 30,000. During our initial training sessions, which we completed at the end of the summer, we adopted the suggestions of having each newspaper monitored by a separate member of our group who would look for likely topics for letters to the editor and um, connections to the 28th Amendment and getting money out of politics. Our group is really lucky to have a talented member who's accomplished in having many LTEs published as part of her effort in the resistance. Um, that member had previously established a Facebook group called I Wrote a Letter to the Editor that functioned as a working group to answer questions, um, get ed editing advice from other members, and to celebrate LTEs published. So quite a few of us um, have joined that Facebook group and use it as a forum you know, for feedback. We also have an easily referenced file set up in our Google Drive for our APA with the contacts and submission criteria of each local paper easily referenced. At every meeting, we gently encourage members to try to make an attempt to write LTEs and report our group's cumulative numbers published. As a group, we've tried to set a monthly goal of four LTEs published. Um, we were successful in meeting that goal in October with four, but only had one in November with the distraction of our New Jersey gubernatorial election and, of course, Thanksgiving. Um, but I know that the, the tax bill now um, in Congress has stimulated a few new efforts um, at LTEs, and I actually just submitted um, on Thursday night. There was a there was someone must have known I was looking for a topic for a letter to the editor. It was actually the New Jersey State Director of American Prosperity, which is a Coke backed group, um, blasting the New Jersey Education Association because they poured millions, literally $5 million into a state senator's race, um, one legislative district away from where I am, which um, led to overall spending of $18 million for that state senatorial state, state seat, excuse me, which um, has been um, said that it may be the most expensive Senate uh, legislature seat in U.S. history, uh, most expensive race. 
Um, so I took her letter blasting the MJEA and I made it a pot called the kettle black and led it to the editor saying, well, that's great that you're criticizing a union, but look at who you represent and the dark money behind you. And it's not right on either side of the political divide, so therefore we need a constitutional amendment to fix this process. Um, so I'm hoping to get that published. Um, so we, um, when someone's passionate in our group meetings about a particular issue, I always make a point of saying, that would make a great letter to the editor. Why don't you try one? Um, and our topics in our letter to the editor, basically we try to include some sort of a personal impact, whether it be uh, mass shootings and the impact of the NRA, changes in government funding of birth control access, or thanking a candidate for considering an American prom Promise Pledge. If we've had a meeting to ask for a pledge, we'll um, say in the paper, hey, we met with uh, candidate so-and-so or assemblyman so-and-so, and thank you for considering this. This is important to us. Um, and we, once we have any letter to the editor published, we post it on our Facebook page and celebrate it in our group email as a personal achievement for the author of the letter to the editor and also as an accomplishment of the group of spreading the public awareness of the importance of getting money out of politics. We've been really good at remembering to bring copies of our published letters to the editor with us to our meetings with members of Congress to show our efforts to build support in, the dis in our districts and our state. But um, we need to remember a little bit more to send immediate copies as soon as we get one published send it out to our members of Congress and our elected officials that we're trying to influence to remind them of our ongoing advocacy. Um, to summarize, I think our success rests on easy access to the contact information to send the LTE submissions, a collaborative forum to get help on editing a draft letter, uh, regular rem reminders to an attempt in LTE with a numeric goal to work towards each month, and celebration of our successes in getting our LTEs published. Great. Thank, thank you so much, Marie. Thanks so much for sharing. Thanks, either. <clears throat> yep. and, and I think it was actually tabling by Laura Nittmeyer at, at an event you attended, organized by your current incredible co-leader, Joan DeVore, that helped lead to the Tri-County New Jersey group, you know, which is really just a testament to, to the power of outreach, um, which is you know, really fantastic and an exciting sort of you know, culmination here on this call with both of you guys sharing. Um, from day one, your leadership, Marie, has really been impossible to miss, and, and I think it's really shown in all the fantastic things you and your group consistently are able to accomplish. So again, huge thanks for everything that thanks. you're doing. Um, thanks. Of course. And if there's anyone on the call who's not yet in an APA and is curious about learning more about one, you know, just send me an email at azerc at americanpromise.net. That's A-Z-O-R-C, as in cat, at AmericanPromise.net. And one of the things we're doing is we're encouraging APAs and others to use the showing of that CBS 60-minute segment on how the outsized influence of the pharmaceutical lobby directly correlates with the spread of the opioid crisis as sort of a centerpiece for outreach meetings at the end of January because that piece is such a powerful example of why we need to overturn Citizens United and get money out of politics. And I know that all, not all APAs will, will do these type of outreach events, but we'd like to take a moment to have someone volunteer to role play, inviting a friend to an outreach meeting, you know, a meeting intended to bring in new members to your APA. So can I have someone volunteer to role play inviting a friend by pushing two, by pushing two on their keypad um, and then I'll know to call on you. And you know, as you're inviting this friend, one of the best things you can do is to ask them, you know, why is it that you're interested in getting money out of politics? And from there, explain exactly what it is you're inviting them to. You know, it's helpful to share, if it's true, how engaging on this issue has affected you and your sense of accomplishment or purpose on this group. So let's see if someone is ready to do this role play by pressing 2 on their keypad. It looks like someone has their hand up. Oh my goodness, it is Joan DeVore. Joan, you're unmuted. How are you doing? Hi, 
Okay, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing really well. Thanks so much for volunteering and for anyone who missed it. Uh, you know, Joan's the co-leader of the really incredible Tri-County APA. I know you've done one of these role plays on these calls before, Joan. <laughs> Always like to volunteer. <laughs> uh, much appreciated, much appreciated. So you'll be yourself, you're a leader in your community, inviting a friend to an outreach meeting, and I'll be your friend. Um, can you just quickly tell me one sentence about this friend who you'll be calling? Well, I'm thinking that I would, this friend could be a person who maybe is not on the same part of the political spectrum as I am, but mm -hmm. perhaps is upset like just about anybody would be with the opioid epidemic. Um, you know, it's a big issue in New Jersey, and Governor Christie's been visible about it, um, you know, uh, mm -hmm. et cetera. Um, so uh, I'm thinking maybe someone from the other side of the aisle for me or, or you know, because I think Great. there's some – so that's kind of a little bit different than, than I think the perspective that you were saying before, but that's mm, sort of the that's perfect. That's perfect. mind. Great. So, um, that is who I'll play. Okay. All right. Well, you're, gi uh, you're giving you know, me a call, Joan. Yes. Hi. Um, how you doing? <laughs> Haven't seen you for a while. Yeah, hey Joan, it's Azer calling. Thank or it's Azer. How thanks so much for giving me a call. Uh, what's going on? Yeah, well, you know, I remember at one point um several weeks ago, you and I had just were talking about you know, some articles that we saw concerning the drug problem in in New Jersey. Um and you and I you were just as upset as I was um um about um what's going on and and, and the lives that it's ruining and 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 the children and young adults and families that are being uh, affected, and because of that, I wanted to I, I wanted to, to let you know about um, an event I'm putting together um, that discusses that. So I, I guess I was kind of thinking, wondering where, you know, have you been thinking about it lately, lately, and what have your thoughts been? Yeah, absolutely, Joan. Well, thanks so much for calling, and thanks so much for asking. You know, it's nice to talk to people about this and. You know, I, I'd imagine like you, I've, you know, been consistently really, really sickened and um, disgusted by the this incredibly heinous opioid crisis, which is afflicting so many people. And the thought that, you know, money's political influence might be driving it is, is something I'd really love to learn more about. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think the feeling that we were saying before when we were talking was a feeling of helplessness, you know. Uh, what can we do? What can we do about it? Um, because it seems like a complicated issue. And, and I was, uh, I have been exploring through an organization that I belong to, a nonpartisan organization called American Promise, about the um, influence, the, the, the impact of money in the pharmaceutical industry and in the, in the distrib in, in, not only in the pharmaceutical companies, but in the distributors, et cetera. And the part that it's played in in making this crisis, creating and and sustaining this crisis, and so we're going to have an uh, I'm, I'm going to have a showing of uh, of a, the documentary that was on 60 Minutes and a discussion related to that. I don't know if you saw it or not. Did you see it? That 60 Minutes documentary that was on about the opioid you know, crisis back in October. You know, yeah, you know, I did see it, and, and Jonas is Azer back here, out of the role play here for a second. I'm, we're just going to, um, in the sake of time, move on. This is yeah. really fantastic. You hit on all the points you wanted. I wanted you to hit on, and, and and I'm curious to hear from you, sort of, you know, your takeaway from practicing that. Is there something you would have done differently? Is there something that went particularly well in your mind? Well, I think what I was trying to do is get into listening mode. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Not that it, not that this, I, I realized it was starting to take time, but um, uh, trying to find the right balance between uh, my ask and my need to listen, because I think that especially mm -hmm. when you're with someone who maybe uh, you have a lot of different philosophies that you, that 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 people have to feel that they've been heard and listened to, and they're not being told and dictated mm -hmm. to. So that's Beautiful. what I was trying to practice. Yeah. And I think, um, and, I think and that really came through, yeah. Yeah, and I think what I would do in in a real life situation is is think about a couple ways to do that. 
before moving expeditiously on to, the, to, to telling them what to do. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, that's that's why we practice. It's all about, you know, you practice it, you learn, oh, well, that was good, that can be better. Um, but fantastic, yes. Joan. Thank you so much for all you're doing. Thanks so much for stepping up. And I'm going to move along quickly now because we've got about five minutes left and we've still got our um, monthly action to talk about. And I'm going to pass it over to the other fantastic Citizen Empowerment Coordinator, Wilboy Gatheru, who's going to be talking about letters to the editor. Hey, Wilboy. Hey, what's up, Bazer? And hi, everybody. Um, this month's action is to have everybody send a well-written letter to the editor. And remember, the goal in writing these letters to the editor is to spread the word about the 28th Amendment and create champions in the media and your local community around the amendment. And the first thing you should do when you're writing your LTE is, like um, we heard Laura and Marie say, is to regularly check your newspaper for articles and editorials so it would be a good angle for calling um, Congress to overturn Citizens United. Try to look for articles that are timely, that are discussing issues that are relevant today, and that are getting a lot of press coverage. Um, for example, um, like Laura, I think, oh no, Marie had mentioned, uh, right now the tax bill is a really hot button issue that a lot of people are up in arms about. And um, on the New York Times website, there is an article about the tax bill called um, tax bill, tax plan crowns a big winner, Trump's industry. And this article basically talks about how the tax bill is going to benefit large businesses and real estate. And what the article does not highlight, um, that would be a great angle for the 28th Amendment, is how this new bill um, was created because of the incredible lobbying power of these corporations that influence lawmakers to create tax codes that are going to benefit them. So you can write about why a 28th Amendment is needed to guarantee that these corporations do not have more of an influence on our elected officials than their own constituents. Um, and you can also urge leaders in your letter to consider why the passage of a 28th Amendment will ensure laws that will no longer only benefit corporations. Um, and the next thing to do is to follow the submission criteria for your papers. And like we said before in other trainings, those guidelines vary from paper to paper, but they always include, you know, a uh, word minimum and limit uh, who you can contact and how to put your contact information. Um, and of course, if your letter is published, congratulations, give yourself a pat on the back and rejoice in playing a part of spreading the word about this incredible movement. Um, and also be sure to email us at American Promise about your letter so that we can share it uh, all over our social media. Um, so you can email myself, that's W-A-M-B-U-I-G at AmericanPromise.net um, to let us know. And happy holidays, everybody. Happy New Year. Um, and remember, what better gift um, is there this holiday season than the gift of a functioning democracy through the 28th Amendment? So push that out if you can. Um, and I can't wait to see how many more letters we publish in 2018. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, I'm going to pass it back to Jeff to take us home. Thanks, Wu Boy. And thanks, Azer. Thanks to Laura and, and to Marie. Fantastic sharing your successes, inspiring to me and I'm sure everybody. So uh, this American Promise team is, is working for all of you uh, and all of our members and all Americans, frankly, across the country. Uh, and so we are going to be uh, continuing to just push this out as far and wide as we can in 2018. We ask for your help in doing that. Share the word. Have those kinds of conversations that Marie modeled. Do those kind of visits that Laura talked about. And, you know, do the old uh, – it's old-fashioned us. It's new-fashioned. Send links and share uh, as well as the face-to-face -to, -face to let people know about American Promise. Let's build this community. Let's build this movement. And uh, we will stay on track as we are now to have this historic win and so we'll see you all at the conference in June, but of course we'll see you before then or talk before then, I'm sure. Happy holidays to everyone. 2017 was great. 2018 will be even better. And uh, let's end on that note. So thanks and take care. Great. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, everyone.